Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now we move on to lecture number 20. This is based on the natural dyeing of bamboo fabric. We have seen natural dyeing of cotton, silk, wool, jute and now it is bamboo fabric. Bamboo is a renewable natural fiber. Bamboo has the largest growth rate among the various types of renewable natural fibers. Bamboo fabric requires less dye syrup than cotton fabric in order to be dyed to the level desired. As they absorb the dye stuff better and faster and show the color better. The most important aspect of clothing is comfort properties like thermal resistance, air permeability, water vapor and liquid water permeability. These are critical for the thermal comfort of a clothed body. Comfort plays a vital role in the selection of apparel. And when we are talking of bamboo fiber, we are obviously talking about what attributes the bamboo fiber has, why we should focus now on bamboo which was not focused earlier by the primitive people. Bamboo fiber is more efficient than cotton fiber as it needs less dyeing color and raw material to dye the fabric as per the required need. So, if we compare cotton versus bamboo, bamboo is far superior as it can be a better adsorbent of the natural dye. It requires lesser natural dye and can give very good results. So, as I told you in the very beginning when we were doing natural dyeing of cotton that dyeing of cotton and particularly natural dyeing of cotton is the biggest challenge. It still remains the biggest challenge because we have seen there is an ease of dyeing with silk, wool, jute and now we will be talking about bamboo. Composition of bamboo fiber. As we have to understand what is the nature of the fiber, then only we will be able to understand the chemistry between the fiber and the dye molecule. Bamboo fabric is derived from the fibers of the bamboo plant, primarily the mozo bamboo species. The composition of bamboo fabric can vary depending on the processing method, but it is typically associated with the following. Bamboo fiber, the primary component of bamboo fabric is the neutral cellulose fiber or the natural cellulose fiber extracted from the bamboo plant. The bamboo fiber are obtained through mechanical or chemical processes. Chemical process and mechanical process. These are two processes through which bamboo fiber can be obtained from the bamboo plant. Mechanical process involves crushing the bamboo plant and mechanically extracting the fibers. This process is more eco-friendly, but can result in coarser fibers. Chemical processing involves obviously using chemicals to break down the bamboo plant into pulpy mass from which the fibers are extracted. This process 
produces a finer and softer fiber, but may involve more environmental concern because the chemical process is a bit harsh. Processing of bamboo fibers, rayon or viscose. Most commercially available bamboo fabric is classified as a type of rayon or viscose. Rayon is regenerated cellulosic fiber and bamboo rayon is created by dissolving the bamboo cellulose into a viscous solution and then extruding it as into fibers. The resulting fabric is soft, smooth and has a texture similar to silk. So, it is as fine as silk once it is broken down and the bamboo cellulose are then converted into a viscous solution and extruded as uh, fibers. Additives and processing agents. Depending on the manufacturing process, bamboo fabric may contain various additives and processing agents. For example, during the chemical processing of bamboo into rayon, chemicals like sodium hydroxide, carbon disulfide are often used. And as I told you a while ago, harsh chemicals are used in the chemical processing of extraction of the fiber. It is essential to choose bamboo fabric produced with eco-friendly and closed loop processes to minimize environmental impact. Now, these two chemicals sodium hydroxide and carbon disulfide are very harmful for the environment as well as for the human being who are and they are very harsh chemicals. So, they if that can be avoided it would be a very good choice of extraction process. Bamboo suited for inner way because it is soft and silky it is well suited for inner wear. Blends of bamboo fiber are sometimes blended with other fibers such as organic cotton, hemp or even spandex to enhance certain properties of the fabric such as stretch or durability. Antibacterial properties. Bamboo fabric is known for its natural antibacterial and moisture wicking properties attributed to a substance called bamboo kun. This makes bamboo fabric suitable for active wear and undergarments, which means that it can absorb a good amount of moisture or sweat and therefore, it is very well suited for sports wear and it is also soft in nature in its texture and therefore, it is even better for undergarments because it has that compound which is called bamboo kun which can actually do the wicking action or absorption action of moisture. Benefits of using bamboo. If we look at the environmental considerations, bamboo is often promoted as an eco-friendly alternative due to its rapid growth and low water and pesticide requirement. However, the environmental impact of bamboo fabric depends on the specific processing methods used. Some manufacturing processes for bamboo textile involve chemicals and may not be a suitable or sustainable as others. So, it is important to choose product made using environmentally friendly practices. Now, if we are using harsh chemicals, then it is not a good idea because it will no longer be environmentally friendly practice. So, the manufacturing process of bamboo textile has to now evolve in such a manner that these harsh chemicals can be replaced, then only it will be sustainable. When looking for bamboo fabric, consider checking the product label 
or information provided by the manufacturer to understand the specific composition and processing method used. This transparency can help you make more informed choices based on your preferences for sustainability and comfort. Because it is very important for us to now look forward for sustainable processes. Now there is no scope for using any longer very harsh chemicals, because we have understood at this point in time that these harsh chemicals are adversely affecting the environment and in you know disguise they are also affecting human life. So, we have to in some way or the other they are entering in our lifestyle and they are creating uh, you know disturbances and toxins in our lifestyle. So, we have to avoid using in order to make the process sustainable. Unique properties of bamboo, bamboo has unique properties, bamboo fibers are claimed to have some distinctive properties such as high moisture absorption, better drape and deep color effect. That means, what more can we ask from a fabric, if it has good absorption moisture absorption, it will be a good dye uptaker also, because dye solutions are all in water. And if it has a good draping in quality, then it can be a good material for garment. And if it can take good number of dye molecules and give deep color, nothing more can be asked for. Bamboo fiber are claimed to have unique properties such as inherent antimicrobial, UV shielding properties without aid from petroleum derived chemicals. So, they inherently have these because for other cotton, silk and wool we have to add antimicrobial agent, do a coating of antimicrobial agent or we have to have a coating of UV shielding coating, but in the case of bamboo it already has those properties and these unique properties and the sustainable nature of bamboo fiber have started to attract consumers in the textile market particularly due to its high price, because right now it is one of the highestly priced fabric because of its such good qualities. If it did not have these qualities, probably it would not have attracted the consumers mind so much. Steps to prepare bamboo for dyeing and natural dyeing of course, because we are doing this lecture on natural dyeing of bamboo. Natural dyeing of bamboo fabric involves a few key steps to ensure optimal results. Bamboo fabric is known for its sustainability and breathability. So, it is already a very established fact that it has all the good attributes of being high moisture absorbing material. It has antimicrobial properties, it has UV shielding properties and it is also sustainable and breathable, making it a popular choice for eco-friendly textiles. Here is a general guide on preparing bamboo fabric for natural dyeing. So, how do we prepare bamboo fabric for natural dyeing? That is, does it have any special step like what we saw in the case of jute, where they did bio scouring with enzymes using xylanase and cellulase. Does it have any other special mordenting method as what we saw in the jute chapter that they were doing double mordenting. So, let us go one by one, pre wash the bamboo fabric, just the way we were doing scouring of cotton, silk, wool, jute. 
Here also washing of bamboo fabric to remove any sizing finishes and impurities is required. Use a mild eco friendly detergent and lukewarm water. This helps to open up the fibers and remove any substances that might hinder the absorption of the natural dyes. So, washing for removing of the impurities. Then comes scouring. Scouring is a process that removes natural waxes, oils and other impurities from the bamboo fabric. It enhances the fabric's ability to absorb the dye. As I told you both in the case of silk, wool, cotton and in the case of jute as well as now in the case of bamboo, the surface has to be clear devoid of impurities, then only the dye absorption will take place. Otherwise, if the surface is occupied with impurities or oils or waxes, it will not pick up any dye or it will poorly pick up dye. Hence, scouring is an important step. For bamboo fabric, you can see or use a scouring agent suitable for plant based fibers. Follow the instruction on the scouring agent bottle usually involving simmering the fabric in the scouring solution for a specified period, rinsing it thoroughly thereafter. So, scouring reagent could be a non ionic detergent or as mild as that or a normal neutral as, uh, detergent which can remove most of the natural waxes, oils and other impurities from the bamboo surface. Then comes the mordanting and dyeing of bamboo fabric. Mordants are substances that help fix the natural dye to the fabric and improve the color fastness. So, here also the mordanting step is common. Common mordants like alum, iron and copper are used as usual, but as I have been telling time and again, copper should be used in minimal quantity because it is considered as one of the heavy metals. You can mordant bamboo fabric by soaking it in mordant solution after scouring. Follow the recommended proportion and procedures for the specific mordant you are using. Allow the fabric to soak in the modern solution for the specified time, then rinse thoroughly. So, the modenting we saw did not require any special technique, it was one of the very common modenting methods which we have adapted in the case of cotton, silk, wool. Only in jute it was a double modenting method, but here it is only single modenting. Then proceeding to dyeing process, prepare your natural dye extract because that is a different uh, procedure that anyway is a common procedure and we have dealt extraction in great detail in the chapter where we were talking about the extraction processes. So, according to any one of the extracting process natural dye extract from the plant is prepared and then use for dyeing. Some popular natural dye sources include onion skin, turmeric, indigo and various plant leaves. Follow a recipe or guide for the specific dye material you are using. This might involve simmering the dye material, creating a dye bath and immersing the bamboo fabric. The duration of the dyeing process and the pH of the dye bath can influence the final color. So, we know that the concentration of dye and its even solution that means, it should be a homogeneous solution 
before the bamboo fabric is immersed into it. Then how much time the dyeing should be carried out, what should be the pH, all these have to be tested out and then only they at that particular pH it should be carried out and for that much period of time. Natural mordants are preferred for bamboo like myrobalan and alum are natural mordants often chosen from the natural dyeing for the natural dyeing of bamboo as they are abundant in their availability. Now, alum could be from chemical source that means synthetic source and alum could also be from some mines it can be ex, you know excavated and used. So, when it is used from natural source it is called natural alum and marobalan of course is a plant product. So, natural mordants are preferred, but it is not saying that it is only natural mordants that should be used. Depending on the mordant used, the color obtained on textile from the dyed extract may be giving different shades and that we have seen that according to the mordant, the role of the you know mordant plays in the color chemistry. Alum and myrobalan were ground separately into fine powder and mixed with water and used as modern to make a modern solution. Bleached bamboo fabric was pre modented with obtained modern solution liquor at 60 degrees for 30 minutes with material to liquor ratio of 1 is to 20. Further steps of dyeing bamboo fabric, mixing the dye Fixing the dye after dyeing, it is crucial to fix the dye color on the fabric. This can be done through various methods such as allowing the fabric to dry, air dry, steam setting or using a fixative. The fixative helps the dye molecule to bond to the fabric fiber better. However, one can even use air drying and steam setting, there is no harm. There are several options of fixing the dye. Rinsing and washing, once the dye is fixed, rinse the bamboo fabric thoroughly to remove any excess dye. Usually there will be dye on the surface of the fabric which should be removed. Follow this with a gentle wash using a mild detergent and let me tell you again and again I have been emphasizing that a non ionic detergent is recommended for natural dyes whether it is dyeing of cotton, silk, wool, jute or even bamboo. Follow this with the gentle wash using a mild detergent to ensure the fabric is clean and ready for use. Drying. Finally, allowing the bamboo fabric to air dry, avoid direct sunlight as excessive exposure can fade the colors and this is true because natural dyes are prone to fading. Therefore, they should be uh, not put in sunlight directly, but they should be air dried in open shady place. Now, scouring of bamboo fabric is done in this manner. The picture on the left hand side shows that the scouring of bamboo requires a material to liquor ratio in the order of 1 is to 50 which is which means it is fairly dilute. Remember bamboo fiber is very tender, very gentle, very soft and the time required is 60 minutes at a temperature which is ranging from 60 to 90 degree centigrade. Caustic soda is only added 5 percent by weight of the fabric and some common salt that is sodium chloride 2 percent by weight of the fabric is added and this is how gently it is 
move with the help of a rod so that you know it is evenly scoured. Thorough washing after scouring. So, after the scouring is done, all this sodium chloride and sodium hydroxide should be washed away. If they are present, they will interfere in the dyeing process and mordanting process. So, one has to take utmost care that when scouring is being done, post scouring the washing has to be very, very thorough. Washing was done with fresh water by dipping in the tub for several times till the water becomes neutral and finally drying in shade. So, the fabric is now scoured and is ready for mordanting. Pre-mordanting of bamboo, mostly among the three processes which we know about mordanting, pre-mordanting, metamordanting and post-mordanting, for bamboo, dyeing of pre-mordanting bamboo fabric is more prevalent. Pre-mordanting treatment was conducted using a mordant. Bamboo fabric samples were pre-mordanted by carrying out a mordant at a concentration on the weight of the fabric. Brightening mordant, alum that is aluminum potassium sulphate 25 percent by weight of fabric and tin stannous chloride 3 percent by weight of fabric, chrome potassium dichromate 1 percent by weight of fabric could be chosen to get bright brightening mordant. If you want bright colors to appear on the fabric, then that is what you should do. If you want a dull color, then one can use copper, which is copper sulphate 3 percent by weight of the fabric, iron which is ferrous sulphate 5 percent by weight of the fabric at 60 to 90 degrees for 30 to 60 minutes with mother material to liquor ratio as 1 is to 30. Now, you see material to liquor ratio also becomes very important because it is an integral part of the dilution. To dilute a solution or to concentrated a solution is not a good idea. After mordanting, the samples were rinsed in cold water to remove the excess of mordant and use for dyeing. The experimental method of followed for bamboo dyeing. The retted, scoured and bleached bamboo fibers were divided into three parts. Pre-treatment of one part was done with 5 percent alum with the weight of the fabric and the second one was treated with 5 percent tannic acid with the weight of fabric and the rest was treated first with 2.5 percent with the weight of fabric of alum followed by intermediate drying and then further treating it with 2.5 tannic acid with the weight of the fabric. So, here also they have tried to do a double mordanting, but double mordanting is not always recommended or is not a mandatory step in the case of bamboo. Single mordanting is preferred but they have experimented with this combination of a biomordant and a metal mordant. So, extraction of dye from the source of the dye plant. The pre-mordanted bamboo fibers were dyed with turmeric and tea stock solution extracted from the source through exhaustion application method. Exhaustion profile of dyeing with respect to time was examined by taking out samples at different intervals of time. The effect of mordants on the dye strength were investigated through the measurement of k by s. Fastness properties that is washing and light fastnesses were evaluated of the dyed bamboo fabric and were measured and compared. Now, because there is a demand of naturally dyed bamboo, 
Naturally dyed bamboo fabric can be used for various purposes. Unlike jute, which was only being used for packaging earlier and then later on it was being used for uh, some apparel and sometimes even uh, you know for tapestries and so on. Offering a combination of sustainability, comfort and unique aesthetics. That is the attribute of Bombay uh, bamboo fabric, because bamboo fabric is only one such fabric which has all these properties of very high water absorption, UV shielding effect, antimicrobial effect and so on. Here are some common uses of bamboo fabric that has been dyed using natural dyes. It can be used for apparel that is clothing. Natural di naturally dyed bamboo fabric is popular for the production of clothing items such as shirts, dresses, skirts and scarves. The fabric softness, breathability and antibacterial properties make it suitable for everyday wear. Home textiles, bedding, bamboo fabric dyed with natural colors can be used to make bed sheets, pillowcases and duvet covers. Its softness and moisture wicking properties contribute to a comfortable sleeping environment. Towels, naturally dyed bamboo fabric is also used in the production of towels providing a soft and absorbent option for bath and hand towels. So, you see because of its special quality bamboo fabric has many uses not only apparel that is garments because of it is soft, it is breathable, it has antibacterial properties, it can be used in everyday use. It can also be used for beddings and it is a good candidate for making hand towels and bath towels. Now, because they have this moisture absorbing property, they can be used for active wear, sports wear. The moisture wicking and antibacterial properties of bamboo fabric make it suitable for active wear such as yoga pants, sports and workout tops. Undergarments can also be made out of this uh, bamboo fabric, undergarments and lingerie. Bamboo fabric is often chosen for underwear and lingerie due to its softness and moisture wicking capabilities. Natural dyes add a touch of uniqueness to these intimate garments. Baby and children clothing, diapers and clothing, the soft and hypoallergenic nature of bamboo fabric, hypo means less allergenic, combined with natural dyes make it a popular choice for baby clothing and diapers. Natural dyeing of bamboo using tegetus flour. Now, how is this dyeing being done? Natural dyeing on bamboo fabric uses using natural modern eco-friendly fabric for various application in textile because of its unique properties was attempted using tegetus flour, marigold flour. Tegetus is the botanical name for marigold used in idol worship forms a temple waste and there is a tremendous potential to use this waste as a good source of natural dye. I think you may have remembered that I had told that natural dyes can be sourced not only from organized agricultural farms, but they can be sourced as temple waste, kitchen waste, forest waste and those are very cheap sources which can be trapped. In order to modern extracted 
from amla that is indian gooseberry mango bark and myrobalan were investigated now they have used three different types of mordants which are all from the bio source so we will call them bio mordants plant parts having enormous amount of tannins the dyeing of bamboo fabric was carried out by using consequently different fashion hues were colorimetric values k by s values and three different mordanting technique showed different depth of chroma that is c and hue with significant changes in lightness values and modern dependency color fastness properties to light and washing were also assessed because whenever such experiments are carried out they have to be carried out in wholesome it is not just that you we did the mordanting or the dyeing and that's it the experiment has to be carried out throughout first scouring then bleaching then mordanting and then dyeing after dyeing it has to be then assessed for c lab values and color fastness then the entire experimentation is complete not other than that so when c lab values of natural dyeing of bamboo with tegetus flower was assessed the first parameter was k by s the control showed k by s only 16.17 and when it was mordanted with amla because amla being lighter in shade showed a lighter shade by showing a k by s value of 12.7 which is much lesser but when it was treated with myrobalan and mango bark it reduced further which means that these did not attribute to any major coloration to or they did not increase the k by s however when simultaneous mordanting was carried out the same control showed a little higher effect of the mordants amla mango bark and myrobalan but when post mordanting was carried out it further reduced the k by s value now this whole experiment what does it tell us it tells us that among the three mordanting methods pre mordanting simultaneous mordanting post mordanting the best still remains the post the pre mordanting post and simultaneous mordanting is something that we can consider was uh, not up to the mark and if we look at the values of this simultaneous mordanting it is fairly decent if, if as compared to pre mordanting and post mordanting so what i am trying to draw your attention that this experimentation which was done as an experimental technique to find out which is the best method and which is the recommended method one can see that it is the simultaneous mordanting which is showing better results with the bio mordants amla mango bark and myrobalan because we have to understand that these are not the final optimized standardized results this is in the process of standardization in the process of optimization we have to do many experiments some may succeed some may fail but from the failures we learn which is the best out of the three then natural dyeing of bamboo was then carried out with rose petal by some other workers natural dyeing of bamboo fabric using natural modern specially eco friendly fabric for 
various application was made for textile industry because of its unique properties using Rosa centifolia. This is a rose species, again another temple waste because we see this red roses being offered to deity and after they have been offered they are removed after some time and there is a huge collection that can be done from temple waste. Biomodent here ex was used was again avla that is Indian gooseberry, mango bark and myrobalan and they again investigated as to see what is the effectivity of these uh, you know biomodents on the rose petal dyeing. The dyeing of bamboo fabric was carried out using consequently different fashion hues were where calorimetric val evaluations were done, K by S values and the three different modenting techniques depth of chroma and hue with significant changes in light values, lightness values and modern dependent. Color fastness properties to light and washing were assessed. So, again the whole set same set of experiments were carried out with the help of using the rose petals which were again bam, you know applied on bamboo fabric and they were from temple waste. So, Tegetus flower they tried and then they tried the rose petals. Now, here are the C lab values for natural dyeing of bamboo using rose petals. They again used pre modenting, simultaneous modenting and post modenting. In the control sample it showed 9.33 as the K by S value, but for their advantage the K by S value increased from 9 to 13 in avla, mango bark and myrobalan. However, in the case of simultaneous modenting the K by S value also increased furthermore from 9.33 to 14 or even 15 in the case of myrobalan. In the case of post modenting only the control showed 9.33, but the avla showed avla and myrobalan showed slightly higher, but it was not one of the best method. So, one can conclude again here for rose petal that either we can adapt pre modenting or simultaneous modenting for rose petals to be used as an extract for dyeing bamboo fab fabric. So, this kind of detailed experimentation helps us to proceed to a conclusion what is the best modenting method, which one is giving us the best rise in K by S because K by S is directly connected with dye uptake. Dye uptake is directly connected with color fastness. So, all these are interrelated and they need to be checked thoroughly to come to a conclusion which step is the best step. Then people also attempted dyeing bamboo with pomegranate peel. Pomegranate peel has both tannin and colorant. Bamboo pulp fibers with direct dyeing and same bath modenting dyeing methods were adapted. The dyeing process by direct dyeing method when dyeing for 30 minutes or 50 minutes the optimal process parameters are dyeing concentration x dyeing temperature at 80 degrees and dyeing pH value at 8 with same bath modent dyeing method when dyeing for 30 minutes. The optimal process parameters 
our dying concentration x, dying temperature again 80 degrees and dying pH value at 8 for 50 minutes. So, once they did for 30 minutes and another time they did for 50 minutes of dying time and then this was done at a pH 9 for 60 degrees. So, they lowered the temperature, but they tried to find out the optimal process parameter to see that you know even 60 degrees dying temperature was good, good enough and pH at 9 was very optimal. It is concluded that bamboo pulp fiber dyed with pomegranate peel dye has good dyeing performance which meets the color fastness requirements of the fabric. So, the ultimate goal of dyeing is to see what is the dye uptake, what is the color that can be obtained, whether, whether it is a color that is most appealing to the consumers and what is the fastness. Because nobody would like to buy a fabric which does not have a good fastness. Now, what does that mean? That the color should not run off in one or two or five washes. If the color retains for more than 25 to 30 washes, we say it has good color fastness or wash fastness. And it should also sustain the xenon light, which is the UV light to see that it has good light fastness. There are several challenges again when facing, when faced with in natural dyeing of bamboo fabric. Bamboo dyeing with natural dyes presents several challenges as what we have seen in silk, wool and cotton. So, similarly there are challenges with bamboo dyeing as well, primarily due to its unique property of bamboo fibers and the characteristic of natural dye. Some of these challenges include fiber characteristics. Bamboo fiber have a different structure compared to conventional fibers like cotton, wool or jute or silk. They are smoother and more resistant to dye penetration which can make achieving vibrant colors more difficult. So, it is not so easy as what it sounded to be. Dye absorption. Bamboo fibers may not absorb natural dyes as readily as other fibers. This can result in uneven dyeing or difficulty in achieving the desired color intensity. Though they have good wicking powder, power, which means they can absorb the moisture, but that need not necessarily mean that it will also absorb the colorant. Color fastness. Natural dyes tend to have lower color fastness compared to synthetic dyes and this is a known fact. The time and again this factor has come and we know that. Ensuring that dyes remain color fast on bamboo fibers can be challenging especially considering bamboo's smooth surface that might not hold the dye very effectively and therefore, the role of the modern becomes essential and crucial. There are more challenges like mordanting. Natural dyes often require mordants, we know that to improve their color fastness and to ensure proper bonding of the fiber with the fabric. However, the choice of mordant and the mordanting process may need to be adapted specifically for bamboo fibers to achieve satisfactory results. Now, we saw that in the case of cotton, silk, wool and even jute, people preferred only pre-mordanting, but we saw in the case of bamboo simultaneous mordanting gave the best results. So, we can we have to do a detailed experimentation to understand what is good for bamboo. There cannot be a general rule based on cotton base 
कॉटन और सिल्क और वुल और जूट दैट दिस इज द यू नो स्टैंडर्ड रूल एंड दिस इज टू बी फॉलोड फॉर बैम्बू देर इज अ स्पेशल ट्रिटाइज पी एच सेंसिटिविटी सम नेचुरल डाइज वी नो आर सेंसिटिव टू पी एच लेवल्स requiring specific ph condition for optimal color development managing the ph of the dye bath can be tricky when dyeing bamboo fibers as they may react differently compared to other fibers environmental consideration while natural dyes are generally considered eco friendly compared to synthetic dyes some natural dye sources may raise environmental concern if not sustainably harvested or if they come from any endangered plant species endangered means something which is now becoming uh, lesser in quantity so we if we harvest that it all the species of that will be gone so such unethical practices for sourcing natural dyes should be avoided all the common locally available abundantly available plants only should be explored and the best option is to use the waste from the temple from the forest or from the kitchen ensuring sustainability and eco friendliness throughout the dyeing process can be challenging however we have to still target to get consistent results consistency achieving consistent results in terms of color and dye uptake across different batches of bamboo fabric or yarn can be challenging with natural dyes due to variation in dye sources fiber characteristic and fiber evenness and dyeing conditions and of course the cost of natural dyes is a common factor which always remains as a crucial point to discuss although natural dyes can be more expensive than synthetic dyes but if we source them from cheap available local sources then the cost factor does not hold good any longer additionally achieving consistent results may require more amount of experimentation and testing further adding to the overall cost so initially it may be cost intensive but after a process has been developed it can be commercialized and that process can be followed by others addressing these challenges requires careful selection of natural dye sources that means if you target at sourcing at the temple waste or the forest waste then the they become cheap experimentation with dyeing techniques and processes specially tailored for bamboo fibers understanding the chemistry of bamboo fiber and then following the steps or designing the experiment and a commitment to sustainability and environmental responsibility throughout the dyeing process there are several benefits of bamboo fabric being naturally dyed dyeing bamboo fabric with natural dyes offers several benefits both from the environmental and from the product quality perspective environmentally friendly natural dye because natural dyes are already known to be environmentally friendly they are derived from renewable sources like plants roots leaves and even insects making them more sustainable and eco friendly option compared to synthetic dyes derived from petrochemicals by using natural dyes the environmental impact of dyeing processes can be reduced contributing to overall sustainability efforts biodegradability bamboo fabric dyed with natural dyes maintain its biodegradability ensuring that at the end of the life cycle 
it can decompose naturally without leaving any harmful residues in the environment. This aligns with the principle of circularity and reduces the environmental footprints of the textile industry. There are health benefits that is natural dyes are generally considered safer for both the environment and human health compared to synthetic dyes and when they are used for with bamboo which has its own unique aesthetic appeal then natural dyes offer a wide range of color that can impart unique and natural aesthetics to bamboo fabric. These dyes often produce a stubble variation and nuances in color creating a visually appealing and distinct appearance. It that is highly uh, valued by consumer seeking environmentally conscious and artisanal product. Enhanced breathability and comfort. Now remember that we had spoken about the comfort factor and the breathability factor of natural dyes and bamboo which is uh, dyed with natural dye. Bamboo fabric itself is known for its softness, breathability and moisture wicking properties. So these properties then go on to add and they can be used for bedding, for clothing, for inner clothing and home textile. Natural dyeing for bamboo fabric also requires quality control. Throughout the dyeing process it is essential to monitor and control various parameters such as concentrations, pH level, temperature and processing time to ensure consistent and high quality results. Quality control measures help minimization of variation in color and ensures durability and color fastness of the dyed bamboo fabric. By following these steps and using environmentally friendly natural dyes, bamboo fabric can be dyed in a more sustainable, eco-friendly manner resulting in vibrant colors and low in environmental impact. Now when we compare cotton and bamboo fabric, this is how we can see that a large number, almost 14 dyes have been attempted to dye cotton along with dyeing bamboo and brilliant colors have been obtained for all these dyes and some of them have been found to be even better for cotton. So what we can conclude that bamboo fabric is suitable for natural dyeing. Bamboo fabric has brings its own qualities of moisture wicking, of being antimicrobial for being having the UV shielding effect and therefore it is one of the most upcoming natural fiber which will be in the coming times in the market. And because of its quality we should promote natural dyeing of bamboo. With this we have come to an end of this lecture, thank you.